part two, a lot of these are um, beetroot. And you're yeah, no surprise that we might be digging some more out because those other ones were good to go. And we might be digging these out for the next two days, three days, I think. Also getting closer, Cold rabbi. We got a man's problem with blooming cabbage moth here. Little buggers. Um, someone's got like a canola crop up the road. I was driving along and there were just hundreds of the sods. I had no bugs on my windscreen. Next thing, all these blooming cabbage moths just start hitting the windscreen. They're like, well, this be right, you know? Bug free windscreen. Last bloody six, eight miles. Bang. Covered in shit. <laughs> It's always the way, isn't it? Yeah, so anyway, still a lot of broad beans that are getting close. Um, oh, yeah, the egg deal. <sighs> you poor Americans, we're going to get some eggs that... I think we lined up to get about 80 eggs, 80, and pickle those. And we, we've got to force money on the old person out of being nice, and they were just about... They're going to give it to us if we're not careful, but because of their pension, we've got to sort of make sure we take care of them. So uh, I've got a whole shit show of five and ten dollar notes. Um, so chives. Uh, so they're actually ready to pick up. They've actually got eighty. They were getting so crazy with eggs while you Yanks are paying what's the equivalent of ten Australian dollars, seven US dollars a dozen. They were scrambling their eggs and feeding them back to the chickens because they had nothing else to do with them because they're absolutely overloaded to the hilt with them. Oh, it's a nice big fat one. Starting to split on the side, actually. I might have to say something about the fact of splitting on the side because that might be ready to be picked. Maybe one wants some taste like radish, but they reckon these taste like cabbage. Hmm. Anyway, got a few prune sticks. Off of, um, what's his name? I think these are being used to try and hold up these or they're put in there. I don't think that's plum tree. Might be blood plum. Anyway, they're just pruning those sticks out. Uh, this is elephant garlic. That's right. He's got a few of these already pulled out the ground and they're bloody monsters. Yeah, you can see some of the bulbs in there. He's got quite a few pulled up of that. I just, I can't get over how thick these are. Look at the size of this. Makes me blasted six foot two male hand. Look at the blooming thing. It's just incredible. But yeah, a lot of blooming elephant garlic. A bit of which sitting out the, up near the shed. I don't know if some of these are leeks. Because I think there might be a couple of leeks. And that might look like a leek that's on a seat or something. But I know a lot of it's that elephant garlic because we've got some sitting at the front door, some sitting in the shed, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, you can see he's coming out. Beetroot. Starting to come above the surface. She's got this stunt where she'll cut it up. Um, as it she boils it. And then she boils the leaves as well with the stems because it's basically charred. These little bastards, what are you doing on here? You're a cabbage moth. What the hell are you doing on beetroot? So what she does is she cuts all these up, the leaves and all the stems, and then boils the actual beetroot cut up into cubes. And then there's a little stunt, and this is a new one that I've never seen before. You know, you got those silicon cupcake trays. She packs a bunch of the cubes and a bit of the stem and leaf into each one of these ones, chucks them in the freezer, and then just pops them all out the silicon, gives them a quick wash, like the actual silicon trays, um, and then bags up into Ziploc bags that go back in the freezer all the little cupcake sized things of these. So you got like a unit dosage of like. What's his name? Beetroot. Then when you want to do a soup or whatever, you go, I'll just get like three of them or four of them, throw them in the soup, and then like chuck in 
bit onion, broad beans, potatoes, maybe one clove of elephant garlic, um, kale, tatsoi, chard, whatever, whatever. So it works out pretty good. Sometimes there'll be like noodles that are boiled and then they're put in the frying pan, like fried rice slash, in this case, fried noodles. And then they'll go and throw in like, you know, maybe pork chop or two, try and cut it up in the pan into little cubes as it's defrosting and then throw in a couple of those. You know, you just, you mix all these things through, but they're, got a very good habit of either dehydrating or freezing and freezer space in this place is pretty flaming astounding so because they've got a couple of freezers in the garage and they're big bastards like the type that you could literally be dropping bodies in you know and you can like throw a whole dealer in but of course you want to cut it up before you go doing that and it's not unknown that occasional deer ends up in there actually because this is deer country Anyway, there's a, there's a good bunch here, and these kind of failed a little bit, and these ones are still going a bit flop. As I said, the rain's all been off kilter this season, so it's all been a bit of a flop. Um, don't know what this is. Ah, it's a few more. Often what happens is there'll be like certain rows of certain varieties. Um, because they've got Rufus, which is sort of like those thumb ones almost. They look like Kipfler. And they've got like a blooming half a wheelbarrow, the thing sitting in the shed with paper over the top. Um, they've got a whole ton of these. That's right. It was all off of uh, timing with all of these. Um, they had a frost in bloody summer of all the times. And it killed off... Something survived, and that some of the brassicas were hard enough, but because of the juiciness and the mushiness of the blooming potato, that's what killed all these ones off on this side. And so this variety got hit pretty bad up to where the pipe is here, and this variety went sort of all right. So they end up digging these up, and you got all these little ones that all like they're honestly they're shit. They're about an inch, <laughs> but they sort of said like, well, it's either that or or nothing at all. So. And they said that there's probably some in there, and with a bit of luck, they'll just sort of regrow. Uh, there'll be enough in them to get going. But we've got a lot of... You don't eat these. You don't eat these. That's a good bunch of potato seeds that are coming. This one looked like it's bloody dear snapped off, but I think it's still going. Little, little flowers. Yeah, anyway... This late frost in summer stuffed a lot of things up. It's been one of these years where it's been huge excess of rain and stuff, more than most years. Um, and uh, not enough sun early enough, too many cold summer days, and it sort of stalled all the season, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, this has got more brassica under there. They're trying to hide things from brassicas from these moths and... Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, I think i have trying to get it to work and it hasn't really worked and then I'm worried about is there enough bloody sun to even really grow the bastards under this? Because that's like a geofabric. And this is non-plastic geofabric, all the black stuff. Yeah! Anyway, 